Hey guys, Carrie Schaefer here with another live rundown on one of the books that I've been reading. This time I am going to talk about Murder Off the Page by Con Lehane. Con is actually going to be a guest on Tell Me Your Secrets coming up. Uh, whoops, he already was a guest on Tell Me Your Secrets. Look at me being all confused. So I already had Con, and I don't think I've put up his post yet though. So that will be coming up shortly on this page and you'll be able to listen to us talking about the book, but we didn't get into all of this. How I select a book and I thought that it would be fun for me to share this with you is always, always, always by the cover if it comes first, then I read the back cover copy, then I read the first page, and then I like to open the book and randomly read something from the middle to see if what I think that I like is still holding up. So sharing my book things with you today, first of all, we can see I love this cover and the title. Um, you can see it is New York. Um, this is about a library in New York where it's set and our main character Sleuth is actually a librarian which is a little bit unusual. So it's murder off the page. The next thing I do is go to the back cover copy and on this one um, often happens on hard copy books what we have is a bunch of blurbs on the back copy. So he um, has had good comments from the Washington Post, New York Journal of Books, says Conlehane provides a fine story, strong and believable characters in a wonderful setting. Kirkus Reviews gave him a starred review. That's a big deal. Uh, it says Lehane awards his previous detective bartender Brian McNulty a cameo, but focuses on the complicated Ray, who looks like a promising newcomer in the talented amateur ranks. So that's all fun, but what is the book actually about, right? That's something I always want to know. So then we're going to go to the inside of the flap. And here's what we have. A note from bartender Brian McNulty, Raymond Ambler's friend, confidant, and sometimes advisor, sets the librarian sleuth off on a murder investigation, one that he pursues reluctantly until a second murder upends the world as he knows it. The second victim is a lady friend of McNulty's, and the prime suspect is McNulty himself. Okay, so I'm already in. I love how this is sounding, so reading a little further. As Ambler pursues his investigation, he discovers that the murdered woman, Shannon Darling, had a double life. Her intermittent visits to the city, a whirlwind of reckless drinking and illicit liaisons with men she met in the cocktail lounges of five-star hotels, had their counterpart in the New York City suburbs where, as Dr. Sandra Dean, she practiced dermatology and lived in a luxurious home in the backcountry of Greenwich, Connecticut, with a doting husband and a young daughter. I'm always a sucker for a double life story. Um, don't know about you, but I love those kinds of plots. When Ambler looks into the past of Dr. Sandra Dean to understand the murder of Shannon Darling in the present, NYPD homicide detective Mike Cosgrove investigates the men in Shannon Darling's life. She might have been murdered because she frustrated the wrong man. It could have been a jealous wife. In fact, any number of people might have murdered Shannon Darling, or as our hero Ambler suspects, did someone murder Dr. Sandra Dean? Yet no matter which way he turns, McNulty emerges as a suspect. Ambler's dilemma seems insurmountable. Should he keep searching for the truth behind the murders? If the deeper he probes, the more evidence he finds that points to the morally rumpled bartender as a murderer. So he's investigating and his friend is, keeps coming up as a primary suspect. So on top of having a librarian as our primary uh, investigator, he's investigating a friend, there's a double identity. I'm totally in already, right? I love this. But as we all know, the cover copy does not at all tell us the quality of the writing or if the story is going to live up to the hype. So then I always go to page one and read the first page. This is what I do if I have the luxury in a bookstore or if I'm in a library or even if I'm on Amazon, if I'm interested, I'll usually read the first couple pages to see if I'm still in. So I'm sharing that with you and you can let me know what you think. Chapter one, that woman was back again. 
Raymond Ambler delivered the file boxes to her as she sat waiting at the library table in the crime fiction reading room of the 42nd Street Library. She stood out for him for a couple of reasons. One of them because she'd broken his glasses a few nights earlier in the library tavern under somewhat peculiar circumstances. He took a moment to take off the glasses and look at them. They were reading glasses, prescribed for him for the first time the day before she broke them. The circular lenses in dark red frames, the two broken halves fused together now with black electrician's tape. Ambler had stopped at the library tavern, the after work watering hole for the staff at the 42nd Street Library presided over by everyone's favorite bartender, Brian McNulty, as he often did, although a bit later than usual on this Wednesday evening, and found his friend Adele Morgan sitting at the bar, sipping a beer and watching intently a small drama unfold a few bar stools away. So I like this. I like what it says about the character. I like that his glasses were broken. He's mended them with electrical tape. I kind of get a feel for the guy. Um, I'm interested still. So the next thing is, is there something in the middle that is going to hold up for me? So I'm going to open it here and just see what happens on page 111. Ambler watched Adele, who was gazing out the car window. Stately groves of trees and flowing fields of autumn grass drifted past the car. It's so peaceful here, she said dreamily. Imagine what it would be like living in a big house with all that land around you. She waved at a passing field and then bounced around to face him. Did you ever think about living in a place like this? You and Johnny, her voice trailed away. And you? The words popped out of his mouth. I wasn't thinking about me. She turned to look out the window again. Ambler spent the rest of the ride wondering what she'd meant and what he'd meant. Did she misunderstand him? Did she think he'd offered an invitation and turned it down? And did he mean an invitation or was it simply a question? How could he know what she meant if he didn't know what he meant? So I love that too, because that tells me that there are characters in this book with relationships, that my main character is doing more than just investigating. He's having some kind of complicated relationship with a woman. I love those little subplot threads. So I knew I was going to like this book. I picked it up. Actually, I um, was blessed to receive this book for free from the publisher in exchange for an honest review, which this now is, is my review. I read the whole book. I liked, I loved the book. It was a great murder mystery. I didn't know exactly who did what until I got to the end. It was well crafted. It kept my interest. I liked the characters. I will read the next one. So that's all I have to say about Murder Off the Page. I do recommend it if you like a good uh, amateur sleuth and a fun bartender character who is the main suspect, a little romance uh, subplot, a fun book in a new series that I think you are all gonna love if those are the books for you. So that's it uh, for my new About a Book series today. If you like this idea, if uh, you like hearing about the books in this way that I've presented this one and the last one, let me know and I'll keep doing this. If I don't hear from anybody, then I'm going to guess that probably nobody cares and I won't keep doing it. But I think it's fun and I would love to hear from you. So let me know. Have a great day. Read a good book. See you later.